G'day fellas, welcome back to another video on the African Royals DLC that's due to release on the 2nd of August. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the 5 new minor native civilizations, that being the Akan, the Berbers, the Sudanese, the Somalis and the Yoruba. Let's get into it. Alright, so let's take a look at the Sudanese. So the Sudanese have got access to this unit here called the Devrish. So we're going to get a whole bunch of these guys out. Now these are definitely one of my favorite native units. And the reason why is because of the mechanics that they've got. So they actually deal ranged, or they deal melee damage from range. And you might not think that that's a big deal, but when you're considering things like skirmishes, which have got 30% range resist, Casadors 45% range resist, Falconets 75% range resist, these guys are doing a lot of damage, okay? That's basically like four times the damage that most other units would do at range. So something really important to consider. They've also got a very, very short attack uh, speed or a very uh, quick attack speed. So 1.0. Uh, so a very, very good uh, infantry unit that's going to be great at countering all of those units in the late game. So especially Corollians that are going to have that late game range resist they're going to do really well against them let's take a look at some of the technologies that they've got access to so the first thing that they've got access to sudanese local forces so it allows askaris and Sena horsemen to be recruited from the set or from the sudanese trading post so that's the first thing so we can take a look at those units the second thing is we've got the sudanese red sea trade which ships two red sea wagons now the red sea wagon is a wagon that can build specific types of units so we'll have a look and, and see exactly what those are. Uh, so let's turn speed always wins off. So here they are. So the Red Sea Wagons, they've come in. So you can build a trading post if you want. Or you can build a, a livestock market. Or you can build a port, which is uh, the dock. Or you can build a tower. Up to you what you'd like to build. And then the next technology, so once you've researched that first one, there's a second technology that pops up. Now keep in mind if you're playing a European Civ, you're going to have a respective uh, different uh, currency that you use to purchase these. For me, because I'm playing as the Ethiopians, it's coming up in, as influence. Uh, you guys will have something different if you're playing on those European civilizations. So now it ships a Red Sea wagon for every five minutes of the game, up to 30 minutes. So if it's been 30 minutes to the game, you get six of these bad boys. Not too bad. That's like six tower wagons, six trading post wagons, and you can build whatever you want. They're very flexible. Now we've also unlocked two more units uh, that we've got access to. So the first one is the Ascari and the second one is the Senna Horseman. So we can take a look just quickly at what those two units actually do. So we're just going to age up a little bit here, make sure that we turn off speed, always wins. Uh, so it looks like there's no build limit on the Ascari. So I think we can actually get out as many of these as we like. Uh, I'm not too too sure exactly how they work. Uh, let's, um, I'm trying to find some villages in here just so that we can drop down uh, it doesn't look like I've actually got any villages. Uh, just to drop, drop down some houses, but uh, you can see that you do need population for these guys here. Uh, I can probably just get this research here. There we go. Alright, so the Ascari are out. So you can see these guys are really tanky. This is uh, an insanely tanky unit, and I don't think there's actually... There's no limit on, on these either. Uh, so you can just keep keep bringing these guys out. So I'm not sure exactly uh, what they are, what they cost for European civilizations, as with everything. But you can see that they've they've got quite a lot of good stats in there. They basically work uh, as a Corollian would, having that ranged bonus against cavalry at range. Keep in mind that is all cavalry. That's not just hand cavalry. Not just uh, that is uh, light range cavalry as well. So they kind of work as a skirmisher. Really, really strong unit. 4.5 movement speed. So if we delete all those, you can see that we can also train the Santa Horseman as well. Uh, so let's get some of these guys out. Now, you guys should be familiar with this unit. It's basically like a Mameluke. Uh, it, it is a very, very tanky boy. Uh, it's got 1,200 hit points. Only available in age 4. Keep, in, keep that in mind. So available in age 4 if you want to train this. Uh, but a, uh, a huge amount of hit points. Solid. And then we can take a look at the final technology. So we've also got mills, estates, farms, rice paddies, and fields cost less wood and are built faster. So not a particularly strong, uh, not a particularly strong uh, technology, but I guess as you move towards the late game, especially for European civilizations, you've got to put down those estates. It's uh, It could definitely work out quite well. And then we've got all cavalry and shock infantry get additional armor ag against melee attacks. Yes. So you can see here that we've got 20% range resist, 40% siege resist. I'm going to I'm going to start researching this. Let's watch what happens to this horseman. 
So now they get an additional 10% on top of that. So that is a significant buff for them. You know, that extra 10% is equivalent to an extra 120 HP. So very decent. I, I really do like uh, these uh, these units. The Sudanese are incredibly strong, mainly because they can bypass that range resist. Very good at dealing with falconets, at, with culverins, with mortars, with anything with, with a very high range resist. It's going to be very helpful. Let's move into the next Civ. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the Yoruba. So the Yoruba are probably my favorite uh, na minor native civilization. And the reason why is because of this guy right here. Now, if you haven't already seen this guy, he's called the Yoruba Esso Rider. So quick training, fast moving, powerful Lancer that slowly loses hit points, attacks faster as he loses hit points. Incredible stats. Absolutely insane stats. But keep in mind, he's just like a Minute Man. He's going to be losing health as he goes. So we can see he's got 200 health. As a base, 40% melee resist, 40% range resist, 35 attack, 7.5 speed, so very, very fast. I absolutely love these guys. Now, keep in mind, these are just age 2 Yoruba Esso Riders. Now, if if your uh, opponent is pushing in, you're going to be able to train these guys up. You're going to be able to get them out. They're not, not too expensive, either 145 resources in total. Not too bad at all. So definitely one of my favorite units. Uh, and you can combine this with their technologies that they've got. So let's get a few more units out just to demonstrate exactly how crazy it can get. Uh, so we, we might even go take the other trading post that's over here. Actually, I can't do it because it's... Uh, hold on. Trading post must be built near a native settlement or on a trade route. Can I not build here? Oh, it's too close to the enemy's town center. All right. Well, we won't be able to go do that. But essentially what you can do is you can double your units with this technology here i i think it is here this one here yoruba twins an expensive technology okay 880 influence uh but just to show you what happens they actually quite literally create a clone of themselves with full hp so for these guys here uh let's just take a look at them in the meantime while we wait for this technology to come through they're just like a, a very basic musketeer unit except the primary thing is that they've got that 25 percent Range resist, so a really strong unit here. Yoruba OU Legendary. Now they are expensive, they're 155 influence, so it says very powerful, but slow training heavy range javelin infantry. Uh, attacks closer targets faster, carries a large shield for extra protection against range attacks. Now they're about to, uh, about to double. Here they come. Boom. Now you might be thinking, okay, well, six Yoruba going up to up to 12 Yoruba SO riders, you know, that's not too crazy. So, the uh, Ethiopians don't have access to it, but the Hausa have got access to it. There's a card that you can send in Age 4, which is 16 Yoruba allies. You can also combine the Yoruba allies from the home city with this technology, and it doubles them as well. So, you make six of them here, then you, make the, you ship them from the home city, and you have a total of 22, and then they double, and you have 44. And they all pop out at the same time. It's absolutely crazy. Definitely a really, really cool, uh, very fun to try and time it right before the fight happens. So let's take a look at the other technologies that are available to the Yoruba. So they've also got Yoruba uh, legionaries or legionnaires rather uh, inflict poison damage. Uh, and so that's when they attack in melee. So just similar to the uh, the Incas uh, jungle bowmen, it is, it is inflicting that poison. We've also got all villagers gather wood faster. So all native and civilian units heal slowly when close to trees or berry bushes. So a pretty cool upgrade here. Quite expensive though, 450 influence for only really 10% uh, gather work rate. So not crazy good. And then we take a look. Yoruba Wrestling, definitely uh, an important upgrade if you want to be doing stuff like this with your Yoruba Warriors. So basically, it just makes it so that your... Um, your units are retaining at a minimum 25% of their hit points because they will actually go down all the way down to zero. Uh, or sorry, not, not to zero, down to one. Uh, and so you can make it so that instead of going down to one, they would go down to 50. So, you know, that way they're not getting one shot by everything in between. Uh, and then finally, we've also got uh, Yoruba Erodo Legacy, which ships to outpost wagons. Walls and gates grant XP upon being built so, uh, walls and gates getting XP, not a big thing, but uh, definitely those two outpost wagons, that's nothing to sniff at, considering it's only 355 influence and you're getting, uh, you know, two things that are, are worth quite a bit. Uh, and so, just to take a look at the, the late game stats, just how, how crazy these guys get. Uh, so, let's 
turn on speed always wins. So you can see those those stats continuing to improve. Uh, let's go up again. And we've got 320 HP. So a lot of uh, a lot of attack, uh, a lot of health, and a huge resist for both of these, uh, or, or for, for these SO riders. So I'm a big fan of, of these guys. Let's move on to the next civilization. All right, so now moving on to the Akan. So the Akan are a, another minor civilization. They've got a musketeer unit, so it's called the Akan Ancobia. So available, it's quite quite cheap for a hundred influence, so not too bad at all. We'll turn on some cheats just to get these bad boys out nice and quickly. Now they do have a very funny voice line. I'm not sure if this is final, but it does kind of sound like it was recorded with a mobile phone. I'm sure you can hear it in there. So let's take a look at the technologies that they've got after we've checked out the stats. So you can see that they've got 170 HP, so tanky boys, but they also have this area of effect attack. So it's almost like they're firing with a shotgun or something like that. They're actually using a powerful old musket. And I guess that's why they've got that area of attack because you can never really guarantee where your bullets are going to go. And uh, as, as a result, they do that little bit of area attack. Uh, they also do slightly more damage to cavalry in melee. So something to be cognizant of. Let's take a look at their technology. So the first technology that we've got is all food is converted into 50% wood and 50% coin. Researches very quickly, so uh, you can see right now it's going to give us a whole bunch of, uh, of extra food and coin, so very nice for treaty, definitely. Uh, we've also got all villagers gather food faster from berry bushes, mills, uh, farms, rice paddies, and fields. So it is a significant amount for berry bushes, so 30%. Only 10% for those mills, though, and for rice paddies, etc. So a very nice technology in here. It's quite cheap as well, 350 influence, not too bad at all. Akan Gold Economy ships one gold prospector wagon. All villagers gather coins faster from mines. Another great economy shipment here. Akan Gold Economy. So really, really nice. We'll take a look at the next one as well. Akan Fontum from. So infantry training and movement speed improved. The Tufuhan takes less time to respawn at the home city arrival point. I don't know what that is, but I think I'm about to find out. Akan Asafo. Your military efforts are joined by Akan Tuf Tufuhan. Uh, that can respawn for free at your home city military respawn point. Let's put on our speed always wins. Let's go check him out. Well, we don't want to delete anything. Uh, so it's it's quite literally another hero unit that we've got access to. So it looks like he's going to be able to drop down a trading post. Very slow though, only four movement speed. You can just see the way that he's walking. He's got absolute swagger. Does he have a pistol he's holding? He's got a pistol? Damn, does he... What does he... Oh, look at that. He, like, he switches it over. That's a pretty cool unit. That's a pretty cool unit. Uh, I, I, oh, my lord. He's strong against... Gosh, look how strong he is against cavalry. Those are some pretty insane stats. That's 75 damage per a, a, every hit against cavalry. That is a lot of damage. Um, and, and so there's some other buffs in here for him as well. This, this buff here, so it reduces the respawn time. It also obviously increases the speed and reduces the... Uh, the spawn time of infantry as well. So really, really nice uh, technologies in here uh, for the Akan. So I, I, I definitely do like them. I'm not a big fan of their uh, unique unit, but uh, I'm sure that will grow on me with time. But uh, I tell you what, I'm a big fan of this guy. Uh, that is some really impressive stats. Um, and uh, oh, it looks like, is he getting buffed up? I think he's getting buffed up by being close to... Uh, where did he get this extra 180 hit points from? Is it because he's close to... Does he have an aura? Pow, uh, can heal good against cavalry. Yeah, he, he gains strength from nearby Akan warriors. That's that's what it is. Okay, okay. It looks like he gains about... Yeah, he gains about 15 health for every Akan warrior nearby. So really, really cool mechanic right there. Uh, a little bit like the state militia. And uh, you can see he's, he's gained that health now. So very cool. Uh, I, I like that a lot. All right, let's move on to the next native tribe. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the Berbers. So the Berbers are another very, very interesting one. Another one of my favorites. I say, I feel like I say that about every tribe. Honestly, they've done such amazing work with each one of these minor native tribes. So let's start by taking a look at the unit that they're able to create. So that is the Berber Camel Rider. So we'll get some of these bad boys out here right now. So these units actually counter cavalry units in melee. So think of them kind of like as a Dragoon, but in melee. And the reason why is because historically, uh, and I, I guess, and, and presently, horses are afraid of camels. There you go. That's the reason why. Now with these units, so these units are 
relatively expensive. For, so if we take a look, so 155 influence. I'm not sure exactly what they cost, uh, but uh, you can also see that they they are considered a light range cavalry, so they do get counted by skirmisher units. So they're not gonna you know have uh, have free reign all over the map. Uh, now, one of the things that is especially cool about this civilization is that they're actually able to train villagers, sort of like the Kree, but these villagers are a little bit different. These are Berber nomads. So the Berber nomads, so there's a limit of five for every trading post that you've got. So on this map, as an example, there's two Berber settlements. You'd be able to make a total of 10 if you got both of them. So the Berber nomads take longer than a normal villager to train. So normal villagers, 25 seconds. The Berber nomads take 34 seconds. So let's read the description and find out a bit more about them. So they excel at gathering natural resources, but they're poor at agricultural gathering. So they gather 66% uh, of what a normal villager would on a farm, but they gather significantly more on a tree. So just, just to have a look at, at what the base is on a tree, you can see that they gather at 0.67 when the base on a tree for a normal villager is 0 0.5. So it works out to be about 33% higher uh, for natural resources and then 33% lower for resources that are like agriculture. You know, if, if you've got to put him out on, on a farm, where is it, the farm? Here. So if you've got to put them on, on a farm or something like that, then it's going to take you longer. Now, another uh, cool thing to note with these guys is they actually gain more movement speed and more health when there's more of them about. So here you can see that the movement speed is 4.1 and the health is 178. That's going to go down to 174 as these guys move away from each other. So it's important that you try and keep these guys together. They're going to have a better time of staying alive uh, when they're all, all close together. Uh, now, these guys are a lot more expensive than your normal villager. 140 influence. Uh, so a, a Kree, Kura de Bois would be about 120. A normal villager would be 100. These are 140, so expensive. And now, finally, we get onto the salt camel. I'm sure you guys have been sitting there wondering what the heck is a salt camel. A salt camel is a little camel that allows you to make a salt mine. Now, if you're not familiar with the salt mine, so this is a gold mine, okay? And a salt mine is basically, I, I know that there's a whole bunch of people saying, a oh, salt mine, haha, <laughs> Drongo, it's, it's your mine. They made a mine for you. Yes, I know, I know. I, good, good joke, good joke. Uh, <laughs> so the salt mine, it has 10,000 coin in it, but it doesn't gather as fast. So if we check the resources here, so it is a salty camel enraged from carrying heavy bags of salt through the desert, constructs a salt mine. Uh, so it uh, doesn't actually tell us what the salt mine does, but uh, we'll drop it down there. So plentiful but slow gathering coin source. So uh, I'm not sure if it works with the Burp Nomads. I think they might be bugged at the moment. We'll just have to check because I'm not sure if, I'm not sure uh, what resources are considered natural. I think it might just be herds and trees. Uh, so the oh no okay so they they have fixed it up so you can see that they're gathering the same rate as a normal villager on a coin mine uh, and and this is the the actual rate that uh, villagers would gather on the coin mine as well so it's not quite sixty six percent it looks to be about seventy percent I'd I'd have to do my maths uh, but uh, it, it's looking to be about seventy percent of what a normal coin mine would be but obviously you've got a lot more coin in there so. A really, really cool technology. You can get this out. Get this in your base. You've got a safe source of coin for a really, really long time. So really nice to have. Let's take a look at some of the unique techs that they've got and what they actually do. So the first one we'll take a look at. Enemy military units become slower when approaching the immediate vicinity of mills, estates, farms, rice paddies, and fields. Now, I haven't tested this, but I've spoken to Azamk and he said he has tested this. They do quite literally need to be standing on the mills on the farms, but keep in mind, because of formations and the way that formations work, let's say that you've got, you know, one farm that's here, and a single camel runs over that, it will slow down the entire formation. So, you know, that's just kind of the way that slowing works in in this game. Uh, and and he's, he's spoken about, you know, kind of strategies that he's planning to do with that. So looking forward to seeing that one. Uh, the next one is called Berber Salt Caravan. So grants a steady coin trickle, which grants more resources the more food and wood you have stockpiled. So another one for potential treaty games. If you've got a lot of resources stockpiled in there, then uh, it's going to grant you more and more coin, you know, the, the, the more you've got. Maybe we can even just test that right now while we're live. Uh, looks like they actually don't do as much damage. Uh, they they uh, they look to do... Yeah, they, they do less damage than a normal villager against, uh, against uh, deer. So we can see that the hunted animals, they, they, these guys get a four times bonus. These guys only have a two times bonus. So there you go. Maybe that's the whole the whole yeah. thing with the nomads. 
But uh, let's move on to the next technology. So your military efforts are joined by a Berber Sultan that can respawn for free at your home city shipment point. Oh my gosh, I'm looking forward to this. Hold on, I want to see this. This is this is exactly what like what we were seeing was with with the Akan. Look at this guy. It's like a brand new explorer. Is is that a baby camel? Look how small your camel is, mate. Oh, you poor guy. Uh, he can train units. Oh, cool. Okay, hold on. We we gotta like we gotta go in right now. Let's get to the next age, and then we're gonna get this technology. He can actually train like he he gets Zenata riders. So these are these are a mercenary unit and Barbary Corsairs. Are these the same mercenary units that I've got over here as well? Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, they are. They're the same units. We don't have the El Meti though, or the Yojimbo. Uh, but I mean, we've got the Zenata Riders. I guess that's. Yeah, I, I mean, I I don't know if you'd be really able to work that out on the fly, but uh, pretty cool. Oh, he, so he gains attack and hit points from mercenaries and outlaws. Oh, that's why he can do that. That's cool. That's cool. I like this. That's a cool mechanic. All right. So let's have a look at what the next texts that we've got are. So we've also got all villagers gain more hit points. Berber nomads gain much, uh, so much bonus damage against cavalry that they can defend themselves from cavalry raid. What? Okay. Hold on. Hold on. What is this? Oh my lord. Look at the damage that they do. They do 50 damage a hit. Imagine that. You've got, like, you've got your Berber nomads up here, you know, on a coin mine. Some cavalry comes up. Jeez, the Berbers really don't like cavalry, do they? And a cav unit comes in, like, Hussars come in to raid. You know, they've got... Look at the health pool that's on these guys. They come in 50 damage a hit on enemy Hussars. That is ridiculous. That is insane. And then we've got Berber Fantasia. So, Zanatas, Berber Kamariders, and Sultans gain a charged... Oh, they get the charged attack. Oh, that's why they're light range cavalry. Because they... Oh my god. Dude, these are so sick. I love these units, man. Musket charged attack. It's actually pretty decent range as well. 15 range. That's not bad. Let's take a look at what it looks like. Yeah, so they're just like a dragoon. Damn. Obviously, it's charged though. So, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to... You're not going to be able to do it all the time like the Zanata Riders are going to be able to, but really, really cool. I I, I absolutely love the, the Berbers. They're, I'm a big fan of them. It fills a lot of gaps for civilizations like the Russians in particular that have trouble dealing with, uh, with cavalry. They're going to have absolutely no problem dealing with cavalry anymore with the Berbers. So really great. Now let's move on to the final civilization, which is going to be the Somalis. All right. So the final minor native civilization that we're going to be looking at are the Somalis. So let's take a look at what their units are. So they've got two units that are available to them. So the first one that we're going to be taking a look at is this guy, the Somali Issa warrior. So he's like a, a, a bit like a Corolian. So counters cavalry at range, but also in melee as well. So they've got a pretty decent speed as well as a high melee resist not a particularly high ranged attack so you don't want to be spamming these guys definitely want to be keeping them back but curious to note that it is against all cavalry so if your opponent is spamming dragoons then definitely throw these guys out there they're going to be quite strong you can chuck them into melee as well use them to protect cannons or anything like that the next unit is probably the most curious yet out of all of them so it's the somali darud militia so I just know that there's going to be those guys in in uh, in the comments saying, doo -doo 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 -doo. yes, yes, sandstorm. Let's get it in here. Get it out of your system. Get it out of your system. So take a look at the um, take a look at the uh, numbers on these guys down here. So you got 30% siege resist, two times against artillery. So they're basically like a culverin. They don't hit very hard at all, but they've got 24 range. So they get outranged just by a falconet. But you can see they've got a very decent range compared to most skirmishes. But they just, you know, they, they are so weak though. You, you look at the damage that they do, it's barely anything. Uh, so I, I've been theorizing with these guys exactly how you would use them. And I think they're sort of a support unit that you'd be using to take out enemy artillery. But even then, they're not doing a lot of damage because it's, you know, they get 26 because of the two times bonus against artillery but then you, it's only 25 percent of that because artillery's got that 75 percent range resist so is it really that important is it really that good uh, i don't know they still get one shot by falconets as well you can see even though they've got that 30 percent siege resist 
It's still not going to be enough to prevent them from dying. I think they would, uh, they probably wouldn't die to leather cannons. It might even take, I think it would take two shots for a leather cannon to kill them. Uh, but let's take a look at the technologies that they've got access to. So they've got six different technologies that they can research. So the first one allows Askaris to be recruited from the Somali trading post. So we already talked about Askaris earlier. Uh, so it looks like they're available here and you can see that they are uh, indeed uh, with without population cap. So let's just get them out once again. So just to, just to show you guys what they actually look like or what they smell like. I think they're an age four mercenary musket unit. Uh, I, ha I haven't seen these guys before, but uh, let's let's see. Yes, they are a powerful, well-drilled African musketeer mercenary ready to restore order. So you've got the Ascaris out there as well that they that you've got access to. Other things that you've got. So outpost, dock, and, and trading post line of sight greatly increase. Enables the lighthouse ability to be used at Somali trading posts, which causes all enemy fortifications, trading posts, docks, and naval units to be revealed for a short time. That is cool. That is really, really cool. And it's 10% line of sight as well. And I think that affects outposts. So I've got an outpost here in my base, so that's going to buff that up insanely. And then I'm sure you could probably like combine that with the church, with the arsenal, things like that. And then, you know, use the, the line of sight bonuses that you get from that in, a, in addition, because, you know, you've got here gas lighting, so we can get that. We can get this one as well. You can get this upgrade here, gunner's quadrant, which further increases artillery line of sight. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can use to improve your line of sight. So really cool tech. Let's have a look at the next technology that's going to come through. So the next one is called Somali Oryx Hide Shields. So just before we do that, though, we're about to get this 10 line of sight bonus. So I think we should probably notice it most right here. We'll see it come out. 3, 2, 1. There it is. So a pretty decent buff. Uh, and now you get to use this lighthouse. Uh, so lighthouse didn't reveal anything, but it was a very cool sound that was played uh, when we used it. Uh, so very, very cool. Uh, so the next one is called uh, Somali Orcs Hide or Oryx Hide Shields. All infantry get additional armor against ranged attacks and all hand infantry become cheaper. Wow, that is awesome. That is so strong. You, you might be thinking that I'm having a laugh about how strong that is. That is incredibly strong. Okay, let, let, let's let say that you're, you've got skirmishers, right? So let me cancel this. I, I just want to demonstrate, okay? So you've got a skirmisher unit, okay? So here's our skirmisher unit. It's called the uh, the Neftenia. So it's got 30% range resist. So that means if you're doing 10 damage, it's going to take 7 damage, okay? But when you get this, so when we research this one right here, not only is that going to reduce the cost, but it's also going to increase... Oh my lord, can you imagine this with, with uh, Portuguese Casadors? Oh, this is going to be ridiculous. Or Abus guns? Oh, man. You're going to get really high resists. And the, the thing with, with resist is they scale very well. They scale on all of your bonuses. They scale very well with your upgrades because this is 25% hit points. It doesn't scale with your hit points, but resists scale with your hit points because they're going off your total hit points, not off your base hit points. So really, really strong upgrade. Wow, that is incredibly strong. I hope I can remember that because that is game-changing. Let's take a look at the next upgrade that they've got access to. Increases the build, oh my lord, of frontier fortifications, outpost, war hut, castle, siege units, and warships inflict more damage against frontier fortifications. Wait, what? All warships, siege units, and artillery, all actions against frontier fortifications increase by 20%. So that means these guys here, right? These guys are, no, these guys are gunpowder trooper. Huh, I think we might need to... I need to see this for myself. Let's get that. Let's get that. Let's get these guys here. We'll turn that off quickly. All right. Maybe we check this guy here. So against frontier fortifications. So let's let's watch and see if we see any new thing that comes through. We didn't see anything that changed over here. Uh, so yeah, nothing has changed here. So probably it's just one of those things that you, you don't see. Kind of like Coyote Man tag. Uh, let's have a look at the next one. So, foot archers and infantry armed with rifles attack faster in melee. So, foot archers and infantry. Oh, not a particularly big one. And that, that Yumi just got sent absolutely flying, the poor guy. Ooh, he went sky high. He went sky high. He, he went for a little bit of a, <laughs> a little bit of a, a moon mission right there. Uh, I don't see this being particularly useful. I'm just... It reduces the rate of fire by 35%, so I guess that's not too bad. Rifle infantry, though... That's Corollians. 
Oh my lord. Oh my god. Corollians. 35%. There goes another Yumi off for a swim. Uh, that is a lot. That's a, that's a lot for like very select units. Uh, so the, the Corollian. And you take a look here, right? Okay. That means that each attack, instead of being 1.5 seconds, is going to be one second. So here, we'll get this speed always wins on. So you can take a look. Now it's coming up. Oh, are these guys not rifle infantry? The, oh, these are gunpowder trooper. What, what are rifle infantry? These are rifle in infantry. Maybe Corollians aren't rifle infantry. Maybe they're gunpowder trooper? I don't know. I'd have to double check that. That, say, that seems really good with Corollians, though. Uh, and, and then finally, we've got Somali coinage. Trade routes become improved. Or trade routes income improved. Villages and fishing boats gather coin faster. So it's 10% for villages and fishing boats on coin, but 30% for your trade routes. That is insane. So you think about this. This is basically like Silk Road, but a native version. If you're playing Ottomans and you get these guys and you send Silk Road as well, that's a lot. Anyway, fellas, I hope that you've enjoyed this look at all of the new minor natives for the African DLC that's coming out. Keep in mind, August 2nd is when it's going to be coming out. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like. If you think I've missed anything, drop me a comment and I'll catch you guys in the next one.